Hello, I'm Maury Wright, Editorial Director of EDN Magazine, and I'd like to welcome you to a video presentation of an EDN design idea. Design ideas have long been one of the most popular parts of EDN Magazine, both in print and on the web, and now we're happy to offer you a video presentation of a design idea. And now it's my pleasure to introduce staff scientist Jim Williams from Linear Technology and one of the most prolific contributors to EDN Magazine. Good afternoon. My name is Jim Williams. I'm staff scientist at Linear Technology. Today I want to talk about a problem that people are all too familiar with, and that is why are clocks and computers invariably off? And one of the reasons they're invariably off is the crystals in the circuits that are oscillating in them are running at the wrong currents. And that's the problem I want to address today on the board behind me, and then a little later we'll go to the bench and look at some waveforms. This is a typical crystal oscillator circuit with a 32768 kilohertz crystal right here. And our task today is to measure the current flowing through this crystal to make sure that it's within limits. A problem with doing this is because these are extremely low power crystals on the order of a microamp allowable full scale current, you can't introduce any substantial capacitance in the measurement less than a puff is preferable. So the problem boils down to how do we accurately measure the current in this crystal without introducing excessive capacitance due to the measurement. The answer to our problem is to use a closed core current probe, in this case a Tektronix CT1 with a scale factor of 5 millivolts per milliamp which translates down to 5 microvolts per microamp. That's all we've got for signal. So we've got our test circuit set up here. We measure the current with the current probe. We come up here into our amplifier. This is a two-stage amplifier, low noise front end, and a nominal gain of a thousand, but you can see I've got written here at the board a gain of 1120. Why is that? That is because the current probe is down 12 percent at 32 kilohertz. So I pick up my 12% by cheating on the gain here. So my nominal gain of 1,000 rises to 1120. So that provides me the gain boost I need to effectively flatten this curve on the transformer out to 32 kilohertz. We were a little nervous about doing that, but we checked with, by running a calibrated current through this thing, just a tenth of a volt, through 100k ohms, through the CT1, and it, it proved that the scheme worked very nicely. We take an additional gain of 200 after this for a total nominal, nominal gain of 200,000, 224,000 actually, because of our 12% correction. And we get our rough signal out here, where approximately one volt peak to peak equals one microamp crystal current. Up to this point, the entire gain chain is broadband. Now what I want to do is I want to take advantage of the fact that I'm operating at one frequency and one frequency only and narrow band the amplifier. To do that, we run through this 1563-2 bandpass filter centered at 32.7 kilohertz. The slopes are very steep on this it's approximately 20 dB attenuation either side of 32 kilohertz. What that does is it just kills the noise in the measurement for us. The gain of this at the peak of the bandpass is unity. Once we come out of the bandpass filter, we run into an RMS to DC converter to get the RMS value of the signal coming out of here. and that drops out of this last amplifier with a scale factor of 0 to 1 volt equals 0 to 1 microamp RMS. We're shooting for an overall accuracy of 3 or 4 percent in the measurement and the way to make sure that we get it is to once again come back here stick our tenth volt through 100K through the CT1, turn this off so now we're sticking a known current through here of a microamp. 
and adjust the gain at this stage for exactly this scale factor. And again, we can get away with that because we're only running at one frequency. And there's no harmonic that the current probe is subjected to, so I can get away with this gain boost down in here because I'm so narrow banded. Now let's take a look at some waveforms. Okay, we're here at the bench. Let's take a look at the breadboard and correlate it to some waveforms on the oscilloscope. This section here is the crystal oscillator. Right there is the crystal. Here's the Tektronix CT1 current probe feeding its signal, measuring current from the crystal. These are the first two stages of the amplifier. This waveform here is the square wave coming out of the crystal oscillator. These are the second two stages here. You'll notice there's a shield between the crystal oscillator and the high gain stages here to prevent the square wave harmonic from getting into the amplifier and disturbing our measurement. This is the bandpass filter and this last green board out here on the end is the RMS converter. This signal here is what comes out of the end of the gain chain before we go into the bandpass filter. That's the crystal current and the peaks here are differentiated response of the crystal holder itself and various shunt paths across the crystal. This is the output of the bandpass filter which is sinusoidal. And we're reading, if we read that with the RMS to DC converter out here, we're reading 485 nanoamps in this case. If I change the drive to the crystal downward, I can get down to about 100 nanoamps at minimum crystal current, and then upwards towards about 830 nanoamps at the top. So there's clearly a direct change between how hard I hit the crystal and how much current's going through it. So what we have here is a real-time current measurement of 32768 quartz crystals. And as we discussed in the early part of the presentation, it's important to get this current right or you're going to have timing inaccuracies, even if your crystal is spot on for initial tolerance. If you have questions or comments regarding anything you've seen here today, you can contact me directly at Linear Tech. Thank you for listening. I'd like to thank you for watching this video presentation of an EDN design idea and invite you to please contact me via phone or email with any comments or feedback.